we'll try to get him out and edit. All right? You guys ready? We are ready. Let's do it. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a very, very special edition of the Alliance Group Podcast. We have two huge personalities, hugely uh, successful folks with us today that we are going to get to know a little bit better. First of all, Miss Drialis Munoz needs no introduction. The most successful Hispanic female producer in the country right now. Uh, she's absolutely killing it. Drialis, it is so great to see you again. Thank you for having me. I always love to come here. <laughs> and of course... Mr. Rolando Nunez, you guys might know him as Mr. Credit, over a million followers on social media, and we are so stoked to have you at Alliance HQ, Rolando. Thank, thank you, you so for much having for joining me. us. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. This is this is awesome what you guys having here. Yeah, I'm so happy. I'm so glad that you guys are, are here uh, checking out the studio. We get we're really looking forward to making some awesome content today, and of course, we always start. Uh, with the podcast, uh, Gialis, I I, I want to just start with you, uh, as I said before. The most successful Hispanic female producer in the country right now. What you're doing is absolutely incredible. I want, I hope I don't embarrass you here. I know I won't. Uh, I, I want to read off just how your career has progressed over the last four years. $136,000 of production in 2020. You more than doubled that in 2021. $325,000 of production. 2022, $554,000 of production. Last year, $950,000 of production, right up at that million-dollar mark. But this year, in 2024, uh, we are just starting August. You're already over $800,000 of production. You are going to do over a million dollars on your own pen this year. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hard work pays off. Hard work, and that is something that we are going to talk about uh, throughout this, uh, just both of you, actually, something that I think that, that that you guys share is this incredible drive and work ethic. Uh, you guys just never stop. And that is something that we're going to get into uh, and, and, and talk about your habits and how you guys keep the energy up day in and day out uh, to have the success that, that, that you're both having. Um, Rolando, I mentioned it, over a million <coughs> followers on social media. You're just 29 years old, and what you've done is you've grown an enormous business based off of teaching people how to repair their credit, and now you're teamed up with Trialis, which, yes. we're, which we're also going to get into. <laughs> but start by telling us this. How did you, how did you get started? How did Mr. Credit get born? So... I'm a Cuban immigrant. I came to the U.S. in 2012, mm -hmm. and immediately, you know, I'm blown away by the internet. Mm -hmm. Right? I, I love the internet, all the connectivity with other people. And when I went to college, I started working for a bank. Right. You know, you, books are expensive, so you, right. you need to work. <laughs> yeah. So I got a part time at TD Bank as a teller. I was a bank teller in Passaic, New Jersey, for probably a year. Then I started moving up in the bank from teller to banker. Then I went to corporate and I became a credit repair, uh, credit analyst. And for you're, you're how old at this age? I'm probably 21. I, I actually wow. have a picture uh, of the corporate TD Bank team celebrating my 21 birthday. Wow. Uh, and then as, as soon as I graduated college, I just realized, you know, corporate is not for me. You know, if you're in corporate, you're in a cubicle, you're mm -hmm. not talking to people. I love to talk to people. Yes. So I'm like, I need to do something different. I went to PNC Bank. Uh, just across the Hudson River as a business banker. And then uh, after that, I needed to do something different. So I was like, I'm going to start a business. I have to start a business. I'm looking to my clients, and I see that everyone who successfully, who has a lot of success financially, uh, has a business. It's a business owner. So I think this is the way for me. Um, keep in mind, I was going, to, uh, I was ready taking my LSATs to go to law school. Right. So right. when I went home and I tell my mom, listen, I'm not going to law school. I'm gonna do a business. They went crazy. Yeah, they're like, "How are you gonna do that? You're gonna ruin your whole life." <laughs> Look how far you come. Yeah, right. right? <laughs> and then it turns out that you know when when I started thinking about what what business can I start, then I'm like, "Well, the only thing I know is what about do I know? credit, right. right?" So let's talk about credit. And keep in mind, this is 2019. Uh, the COVID pandemic was about to hit, mm -hmm. so it was a, it was a weird time where everyone was stuck home, mm -hmm. and the only way out was social media. Right. So I started doing my business, and the first problem I have is, well, I don't have any clients. I don't know nobody. Right. So I started doing videos from the back of the bank. 
Actually, you were at work at the I bank. I was at work in my lunch break. <laughs> you know, banks have like an ATM room. Uh -huh. I'll go into the ATM room and start talking about credit. And it's funny, my first video, you can feel like the ATM go, woo. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. I'll have like 30 minutes. So I'll have to come up with an idea and make a video in 30 minutes every day. And like Driali says, you know, hard work pays off. In social media, it's about the same. Right. You have to come up and do a video every day. You have to be consistent. And then you will do 100 videos that no one will watch. Mm -hmm. Thank God, because they, they suck. <laughs> <laughs> and and then one day, then you'll go, boom, and you'll explode, right? And and that's exactly what happened. I probably spent like two, three months running my business after work and doing the videos at work. And then one day, people started listening to what I had to say. And it's a, it's a great... It's a great pleasure for me to be able to bring, you know, the the, the financial knowledge that, that, that the Hispanic community needs desperately so desperately. Needs. Right. So, you know, we became, we, we created this huge community. And now we not only talk about credit, we talk about credit, we talk about uh, business, we talk about insurance. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the reason why we got into it. Because then we realized, okay, people have their credit fixed. People have all this information, but what else? can we do that have a huge impact right. on people's life? And man, you have to talk about life insurance. When you're talking about financial impact, life insurance is right there. You, you, It, it, it absolutely is. Yes. So, and, and, and this was kind of the pattern you were following is, you know, you start with credit, but then you, you, you eventually realize you can't just teach people to repair their credit. You need to teach them how to prevent to get in those situations yes. where you, where, you know, where your credit's been dinged in the first place. And that all, it all gets into that financial education. And, and as you said, Insurance is a huge part of that financial education, and this is where you kind of come in, Drialis. So, um, Rolando, you uh, went down the road of educating yourself about insurance. You're a you are a student at heart, and in our conversations, I, I've I've noticed you you want to have both sides of every story. You want to gather all of the information so that you can be making sound uh, recommendations to your to your followers and and, and to your clients. You went down the road of getting your insurance uh, license and you got partnered through a friend with a company that shall remain nameless uh, <laughs> who uh, who were saying some less than savory things about permanent insurance, cash value life insurance, and particularly IUL. And this is where Drialis um, came across you now. Back up a little bit, Drialis, you, you were aware of Rolando and Mr. Credit and you were actually actually you vetted him and you said this is actually a guy who knows what he's doing there's not there are some unsavory characters in the in the credit repair Unfortunately, world Unfortunately, yes right so you were actually telling uh, your clients who needed credit repair hey go to this guy i've seen him on instagram he's he, he seems to be good right i had some clients that told me that it, this guy was very nice was very good he seems like you know Smart, professional. Smart, professional, right. and that they were repairing the credit. Mm -hmm. And they were very trusty people. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, I'll take your work because everybody asks me. I have lots of clients. Right. And one of the things that they always ask me is, Triales, can you repair my credit? Do you know someone that you could trust? So I said, no, I can't help you with that. Mm -hmm. And I usually don't like to recommend a lot of people. Right. But they told me there is this guy that's very nice and talks about credit and he's looks very genuine. Mm -hmm. I mean, go ahead and I will send them the Instagram and follow him and follow him. And that's how I started referring a lot of my clients from life insurance, IULs, annuities, everything to him. So you, you, you guys didn't even know each other. I never you were just saying, all right, not know him. if you need something with credit repair, I've vetted this guy. He seems good. Yes. I can't help you with credit repair. I can help you with your insurance. But if you need credit repair, follow this guy. He's got He's got good uh, knowledge and information. And he seems like a very nice person. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a good combination. Right. So uh, my clients were with him repairing the credit in one night. <laughs> we have a <laughs> rocket star. Now you're asking me how I met him, one right? One dark and stormy night. It, on the weekend. <laughs> 3 a.m. Like 2 something. I started getting uh, a bunch of messages on Instagram and they were like very upset clients. They usually like me uh -huh. right. <laughs> and I like them. But I, all of a sudden they don't like you no more. <laughs> no. Like, all of a sudden I had like about nine, eight people really upset at me. Things like they were actually writing me since 9 p.m., but I haven't seen it until mm -hmm. I got a bunch of them at two o'clock in the morning and then at five and I, and I, and I saw this video 
of Mr. Credit Rolando. <laughs> and I'm like, what's happening? And they say, is this true? Triales, can you tell me if this is true what this guy is saying? Oh, my God, my IUL, this and that. And I'm like, what happened? What did he tell you? And then I started watching the video. And, and I'm... And I'm gonna tell you what the video was about, so so people right, yeah. because I'm sure people are wondering, okay, what did what, he what actually was said, this video, right? right? And and the reality is, you see, social media has this ability in where you can say something and people can misconstrue what you're saying oh, yeah. really fast. Sometimes people hear what they want to hear, right? So of course, my my opinion, you gotta. When I started in the in the insurance industry, I wasn't aware that there was so much polarization mm -hmm. when it comes to products, oh, right? Yeah. You have like a whole team of agents that really, really hate mm -hmm. permanent insurance. And right. then you have another team that are really a fan of them. Right. And then you have few people in between right. that do a little bit of everything. And when I started doing my documenting the process, I... I did my research and I was with the with this company and they told me, listen, they were uh, one of those right. By they didn't like they didn't right, right right right. So they were like, listen, life insurance is just if you want to do a right by term, invest the difference, mm -hmm. and that's it. Yep. Anything anything different than this, you're you're wrong. Right. I'm like, okay, well, these guys have like 20, 25 years of, of experience. I mean, yep. they seem pretty pretty solid in this thing. Uh -huh. And and the reality and that's why the the the, the experience I think is so important. When you do the research, when you run the numbers, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. In a lot of cases, it makes a lot of sense to buy term and invest the difference. Mm -hmm. However, there is a lot of different cases out there and a lot of different situations. And, and when it comes to insurance, unfortunately, we wanted, well, I don't think in insurance only in finances, people wanted it to be one answer. Yes. But in the reality, the right it's just. And, the wrong answer. and it, it just doesn't work that way. It's, it's and I didn't know that. Gray. I didn't know that. And I think. When I made the video, I was saying, okay, the right way to do it is to buy the buy by term and invest the difference. Right. And I made my whole argument as to why I didn't think, uh, you know, IULs or a whole life or anything uh, permanent was a good IUL idea. was not a good auction. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm don't like, do it. I just told my people, hey, don't do it. That's what he said. And everyone, <laughs> everyone went like, whoa, if Mr. Credit is saying that, must be true. Because that's another thing. When you have a, a big following. A loyal following. It's it's a responsibility, mm -hmm. right? And when I met Realis and I learned a little bit more about it and I changed my mind about many of these products. But mm -hmm. before you say that, mm -hmm. right? before you say that, I cry. <laughs> so yeah, I cry let's, because let's actually go back to that dark story night. Two two thirty in the morning, Driala starts getting all just of this. Writing a long comment on my video. I what, so what do you do after you start getting I this see feedback? These very young men that I actually like destroying you've been people to destroying the IUL <laughs> and saying this is the way you need to do it. I said you have been contaminated, <laughs> intoxicated, <laughs> and I know exactly by who. Uh -huh. I already knew because what he was talking, it was the speech that I hear from people. Some of people our viewers might have already guessed like, this company. I have the <laughs> truth, and if you don't do the truth, you will go to hell. <laughs> there, there's actually religions that say if you don't do it the way I say, right. you will be to the other side, mm -hmm. and you know you won't come to right. paradise. Okay? So you reach out. You reach out directly I to I try to write to him, and I wrote so much that when I went Thank God. press, <laughs> Thank God, um, Instagram, Instagram said, has a limit of characters. You can, <laughs> you can. So I said, God probably sent me this so I could <laughs> tranquilize and just go breathe. And then it, my husband was telling me, don't cry anymore. Listen, this is going to be, you're going to tell your customers the truth. You're going to talk to them. And you, but tomorrow morning, you can't call them now. Mm -hmm. I'm like, they wrote to me now. <laughs> and they, but I have to contact this guy. He's in, a all young fair, guy. in all fairness, it had the same effect in a lot of people. It wasn't only you. Yeah, right. Everyone was calling me crazy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I have to talk to this guy. So I wrote to him in a private message. And, and I said, He's probably not going to answer me, yeah, but you, I you have you have a, a million followers on social media. You get messages all the time. I, I I think it's an incredible part of the story. You write him a message. Yes, and I and it, and it wasn't a mean message. I had seen what happened to him because after that video, all the agents that sold IUL and were actually helping people for years, they were like, "What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. You don't know this, and you don't know that." And they were attacking him. Right, and and I was like. The guy doesn't know these. So we need to go to him 
in a good loving up. way yeah. right. you don't beat up someone that really always wants to help people because i seen him he he was a he is an honest person mm -hmm. so when i wrote to him i wrote a nice message even though i wanted to really say <laughs> i don't like you 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 have been giving the wrong message for the first time and i used to like you but i don't <laughs> but then i wrote him the message and he actually called me the monday morning it was a monday morning yeah. that's incredible what what stuck out to you about her message so that made you want to respond and actually you know I, like i said you get hundreds of messages a day why did you picture alice's message to listen when you when you have a big community that follows you negative comments are a day-to-day -day thing yeah. so even when everyone is grilling me on the comments i tell people hey my job is to during my page so you can get my opinion right. you might not agree with it mm -hmm. but i'll give you my opinion anyway that's that's why you're here right Now, if you can call me whatever you want in the comments. Mm -hmm. I won't cry at night. Now, thick skin. Yeah. Yes, you have to. Mm -hmm. But when Dialis texted me, she was like, "Call me," and she just sent me the number. At a moment, in where all the agents were going out, right? Mm -hmm. They were going all out, and I'm, I was like, "You should, you know, doing the Stonewall thing." Okay, whatever. Right. Yeah. But I wrote you a message. She a wrote nice me a message. message, and she said, "Listen, I had, a, I have a lot of experience with with life insurance. Life insurance is." It actually has an impact on people's life. And I, I would like to talk to you because I want to share my experience. And she and said, it's not the way she you said life it. insurance is for helping people. And that is something that's, that actually That's what happened when I, when I spoke to her in the morning. I remember I was driving mm -hmm. uh, and I'm calling her from the car. And before that, she wasn't the first one actually reaching out to me because a lot of agents saw this and they were like, well, this guy has a big following. We want to recruit this guy, mm -hmm. right? And everyone that called me, they were starting, they started talking money right away. This is the percentage. If you come with us, we'll do this and that. And people were already doing follow-ups with me. You know, they were already trying to get me. And I was making my I'm like, okay, let me let me see What's which team do yeah. I do I get, right? And then when I spoke to Drialis, I was expecting the same thing. Hey, come work for me, right. we'll give you a bigger I percentage. I never even thought of recruiting. And him. then she was like, listen. Not gonna talk to you about percentages, not gonna talk to you about nothing. Let me tell you about my experience. And she started talking to me about when she came to the US with her dad, and her dad is a doctor, mm -hmm. and how everything she's done so far is about helping people. The same thing through the doctor's office, and insurance have the ability to have this impact. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it firsthand. And I've, I know what, what it feels when somebody gets sick and you go hand them that check. Mm -hmm. And that actually stuck with me because I honestly believe that the best way to make a lot of money is to make a huge difference. Right. Like if you can help a lot of people, people will give you money. Right. That's money is what you get as a result of doing something good. Yep. yep. And people don't understand that. A lot of people out there, they're, uh, they think, you know, the grind is gold, they chase the money. When in reality is how many people can you impact positively? And that will generate the most amount of wealth. It's something that Jerry Stratton always used to say. Yeah. He, he said, if you can help people get what they want, you will get what you want. But if you focus on making money, you're you're, you're never going to reach and I, never, I have to focus on what can I do for you. Right. And you'll give me your money. Yep. And I never. Willingly and, and, and happy about it. Yeah. yeah. And let me tell you, I, when I talked to him, the only thing I wanted him is to understand that he could even stay with that company. I just wanted him to understand yeah. my point of view. Yep. That that what the product that we had wasn't as bad as he was painting it because he did not know Didn't about the, the living benefit. Needed, right? I never crossed by my by my mind to recruit him, to bring him to our company. The only thing I wanted to is fact check him. Underst <laughs> you just understand wanted to fact check him. my understand my point of view because it had a big impact mm -hmm. in my life to help people understand But mm -hmm. they could help others on the thing. And to me, he could have helped a lot of people, even if he didn't come to work with me. It, it's just his opinion was valuable mm -hmm. to people. And if I could help people by making someone understand and see a different point of view, then we are winning. And, yeah. and you know what's the funny part is that you can be wrong with correct information. Mm -hmm. So because right. because when I'm when I look at the video, the video the, the information on the video is actually factually correct. Right, right. The yeah. problem is that you're you're looking at it from the wrong angle. Mm -hmm. You're saying, okay, buy term, invest the difference. That's an awesome way to do it. And it's true for many people it sure. is. 
And but then the wrong part is this is the only way to do it. Right. Right. And then I think a lot of agents don't get that and they're they're taught to think that way. Mm-hmm. And then it's been my experience so far since I get to deal with so many different people from so many different backgrounds that not everyone buy life insurance for the same purpose. Right. And when you have only one approach, it's really hard to help everyone. Right. And I remember when I talked to Drealis, right? We had a whole conversation for like a whole hour. Mm-hmm. I was sitting in my car. Maybe longer. And she was, she was blowing my mind with all these stories because uh-huh. it was all about stories. And we didn't even talk about money. She was just talking about how she has been able to help families when they need the help, right? And I, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an immigrant too. We have gone through some tough times. Right. So it really resonated with me. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? Let me get back to you. You know, yeah. let me let me let me think this, this a lot over. Of information. I yeah. go home and I'm like, I'm talking to my wife and she's like, I'm like, you know what? I had a weird conversation this morning. And I don't know, man. I, I feel like I might be on the wrong side of this thing. Mm-hmm. You know? He was. And, and and the reality is is that like I'm like, okay, my responsibility as a communicator in social media is for is at any cost to speak the truth. Right. Right? People know when you speak the truth. And the resolution of all this is I came back and I was like, you know what? Maybe you do have a point. Let's let's talk about it. And then I realized, okay, permanent life insurance is the solution for many people out mm-hmm. there. Right. And the reason why. But then I came back and I ended up in the middle of two very, very disagreeable sides. Because mm-hmm. now, that's the thing. Many of the agents that didn't agree with me, that didn't like me because what I posted, still don't like me. Right. And the reason why they don't <laughs> like me is because... I also discovered that in social media, at least when in the in the in the Spanish side of social media, we tend to um, misrepresent insurance all the time. Mm-hmm. We tend to go and talk about insurance the in ways in where we're not informing people properly. We're comparing insurance with products that are not insurance products. Right. We're using all these selling techniques that are not really on the best interest of the client. Right. right. And when we started making, I said, you know what, Realis, thank you. I'm gonna join your team. I'm going to. I really believe we can make something good, mm-hmm. and I have the same desire of helping people that you do. And she opened the doors for me. She was. She have gave me all the support so far. I'm so grateful. Yeah. But she also. But I also told her, listen, and I think this is an opportunity for me to be able to talk about life insurance in the proper way, which is weird because most people don't. They or they're either on one side or the other side. Right. It's black or it's white. So I'm like, you know what, guys? We have to get rid of this facade and just tell you straight up what is it, what is not, and then you'll make your decision. Right. And people are loving it, man. So far, so good. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I think it's incredible that you guys found each other, really, because you have so much in common. It's not we do not not just that you you're you're both Cuban immigrants. We um, both came here when I came 17. here when I was 17, and he came here. Yeah. When he was 17. So I have been in wow. this country for 30 years. <laughs> It's going to be now uh, soon, 30 years this year. And he's for been me, here 12, for 12, 12, 12 years. But we both live in the communist. Mm-hmm. We both went through a lot. To us, this is not really hard work. <laughs> because we already been through very tough right. times and a tough I remember Country. she she was she said you know what now that you decided to hear me out um, I'm gonna send someone that I think you should know mm-hmm. and you know Ivan from Univista yeah oh uh, yeah she The she man. introduced she introduced me to him and he was like you know what I'll be in New York next week uh, I gotta do something uh, with National Life I believe uh, let's do let's meet after. I I'm did like, a connection. Okay, yeah. I and call everybody. We put met them together. We met in New York City in That's the lobby of a hotel. I probably what was it like at 11. I remember it was super cold. 11 at night. 11 at night and we were in the we were having a drink at the lobby of the hotel mm-hmm. and he said, "You know what? Drialis is exactly the person that you thought it was." Mm-hmm. Uh she's killing it because she's helping so much people. And but but don't believe me. Come to Florida so you can see it. Right. And I'm like, "You know what? Bet I'll, next week I'll I'll be there, <laughs> and I don't know, man. Probably what was it like two weeks? It was two weeks. Two after weeks. Dan. I, I was down in Florida. That's incredible. And we were already getting everything done, training. Well, it's been what four months, and he we went already. To, he went to my house, mm-hmm. and then we did a video explaining we did everything. A video, uh, I said I'm gonna grab you by your ears. It went what viral. You did to me. <laughs> The video went viral. Uh, 
Um, wow. And well, so fast forward to today, we already have six agents. Uh, each of those agents are almost about to hit a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, I think in several their of first them year. Are, are on on track it's for insane. qualifying yes. for Arizona. I yeah. mean, it's, it's it's pretty. We incredible. train them. We have more training. We had team up and and try to help them and get them excited about helping people. I always tell the agents that I train, the people that want to do this, don't think about the money. People could smell that. Mm -hmm. If you work with your heart, everything is going to be okay. If you help people. Focus on helping. You're going to get a lot of referrals. Work with your heart. Do not ask me mm -hmm. how much you think I'm going to make in the next three months. The, I don't want to work with people like that. Mm -hmm. I don't. It depends on how many people do you help from your heart. And everything is going to come like the way it's supposed to come. I mean, the, the fact is, uh, if we can, you know, just speak frankly about it, there are, this industry is full of people who are out to just make a sale at whatever cost. At whatever cost. They'll say whatever it's they horrible. need to say. They'll sell whatever they need to sell. Whatever. They lie. Whatever Some they're going to get paid most to sell. Us. Right? And so that's not actually a bad thing for people that are in your position where you can say, look, I can, I can stand out from the crowd. Just like you said, you've got all those people and many people have had experiences, unfortunately, with agents that, that are like that. Um, so when you can actually come from a servant's heart and you are actually focused on their well being and doing what's best for them and educating them instead of selling them and giving them the knowledge they need to make an informed, empowered decision and focusing on helping people. If you can do that, you will stand out from the crowd. You will get referrals. You will be successful in this, this industry. This is not a profession for people that are hungry of money. Mm -hmm. If you're hungry of money and this is all what you need, I'm sorry. You need to get another type of profession. This is a profession for people that love to help others. This is a profession. This is a career that you got to be proud of because you help people. I, I think that, you know, we're very lucky to to be insurance agents. And the, and the reason is, especially in my, uh, from my part of the world, you know, the, the Hispanic community mm -hmm. doesn't really have a lot of knowledge about this. Right. And it's a, it's a product that can really change the, the, the whole community. The, the, the Hispanic community is kind of, um, you know, for lack of a better term, kind of lagged behind yes. as far as knowledge about insurance, belief in insurance. I think yep. th there were a lot of, um, uh, I, I, misconceptions about insurance. Mm -hmm. People's grandparents didn't have life insurance. And, and the, the insurance parents. companies down there in America Latina were different. Mm -hmm. they, they don't represent what they what the American insurance companies do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a whole combination of willing ignorance, mm -hmm. ignorance from past experiences. And I believe that we're so lucky because we have such a huge market. Oh my gosh. That will a growing market. Yeah. That will allow you to make all the money in the world because you can help so many people. There's so many. And let me tell you, I had seen in the last three years a big change in our community. Mm -hmm. I don't know how the numbers are. You guys see all the numbers. Well, I see and your I'm talking numbers. about <laughs> Yeah, but I'm talking about communities like Absolutely. race or Hispanic are really into life insurance for the last three, four years. They're coming around. They're starting to understand. I'm so proud of my Latinos mm -hmm. um, because I feel that I had done something in my little part and that we agents have been doing a great work educating our, our Hispanic. I don't want to be like, oh, Latinos don't know anything. They're ignorant. That's why when they die, their families are full of debt. Their kids have no money to continue their education. No. Hispanic are people. They're smart. We're hardworking people. Mm -hmm. And we need to educate ourselves. And we need to understand the products so we could understand how it works and help our families and protect ourselves and build our future better. Build build wealth. Build yeah, build, build legacy. Wealth, right? Build legacy. I don't want to be like I don't want to hear people that says my great grandfather was poor, my grandpa was for poor, and my dad was very poor, and I'm poor, and then my kids are gonna be let's break the change. Mm -hmm. We have the power. We could do an IUL for our kids. We could teach our kids about finance. Mm -hmm. We could do term insurance. We could do whole life insurance to break the change of we have been poor. Mm -hmm. We are immigrants, and the only thing we had done in this country is work. 
we could do them both. We could work, we could build wealth, we could help people understand that the future of our new generation are in our hands and mm-hmm. it doesn't cost much. And these are insurance products that you're talking about, whether you're talking about term, you're talking about permanent, you're talking about cash value, life insurance. These are tools that have been used by the wealthy for years, for years. going back to the Rockefeller. I tell everyone, listen, you know something that any insurance agent will agree? Having some insurance is better than having no insurance. Absolutely. And I want to tell you a story. This morning, I actually woke uh, yesterday. I woke up to a very sad news because I had a friend of mine that we had the conversation about insurance, and he was like, "Nah, man, I don't. You know, I don't do this thing." She just had a cardiac arrest last oh week, gosh. and really? la- like probably two days ago, and we just saw the GoFundMe. And funny enough, we were talking about it the other day. Mm-hmm. They just posted the GoFundMe. Hey, you know, let's help this family. Thank God people are helping. Right. But it's it's a bad strategy. It, 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 hurt, just, it hurts every time, right? Yes. I mean, as soon as you as soon as you learn about things like living benefits and you start representing these products, it's I always say it's like the blessing and the curse. The blessing is you have this opportunity to help so many people, but there's a curse that comes with it. And that from now on, every time that you see a friend, something happens to a friend. And maybe you talked to them, maybe you didn't. But if you see somebody that you know, or even a friend of a friend who suffered that heart attack or got that cancer diagnosis and they didn't have it in place, there's that part of you that says, damn, I could have changed that. And this is the reason why our career, our profession is so important. Mm -hmm. Because we have the opportunity of bless someone. And if we stay quiet, and we don't tell someone that kind of this is what you could you pass by but some agents are like i didn't tell my friend i didn't tell my family members because i'm embarrassed because i don't want them to think that i'm aggravated them and they did not tell them yeah. the blessings of a life insurance everybody that knows realis knows one thing life insurance i do life oh, insurance yeah. yes i could does. help you i could do a term I could do an IUL, I could do a whole life, I could do an annuity, You'll help and I could do health insurance budget. and every other kind of insurance because I made sure that all my friends and every single person in my family, I had had a conversation. Now, do you want to do it or you don't want to do it? I'm not going to be bothering you, mm-hmm. but I'm giving you the message because I don't want to have that burden on me. I don't right. want to have that, oh, my God, I, I have an aging. I have a friend of mine that because did not tell a friend, a close friend of him, because he was like, I don't want to tell him. The guy died and left two kids and a wife and having his best friend mm-hmm. doing the life insurance. And now we have to do the go for me. Mm-hmm. And I tell you, I used to look at the of go for me, but I have so many that right now I'm like, what now? Because there's the whole thing. My dad Most of them and my never friend get funded. and my right. these and my dad. People are using it to collect money to go to teams, to play, to go on vacations for the kids <laughs> in, in New York mm-hmm. and do a camp. Help go for me because my daughter wants to dance in a ballet camp. Mm-hmm. So what happened is go for me have been uh, just hijacked. Yes, hijacked yeah. by people that are not using it for the right reasons. And people are not reading. You read it because it's your friend. Mm-hmm. Okay? But I tell everybody, why would you have go for me as an auction when you have heard it so many times? Mm-hmm. Prevent that. It, you have to be diligent. Well, the, 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 the fact is, is that GoFundMe is not a plan. And, and I don't think anyone thinks of it as a plan. It's the lack of a plan. Right. Yes. It's, it's, I didn't plan anything and now something bad happened and it isn't the person that, that, that affected that starts the GoFundMe. It's a friend or a family member it's a who's good like, person. oh man, it's a good he person. is in bad shape. He was not, pl- he was not prepared at all. We have to do something. Let's pass the hat. Right. And as, as you just said, Rolando, there was just a study released, um, February of 2022, I believe the first study, um, about GoFundMe and, and medical bills. And it found that, Less than 9%, I believe, is the number of GoFundMes for medical bills reach their funding goal. And actually, a higher percentage, 11%, don't get the first dollar. So it isn't just that it isn't a good plan. It's that it doesn't work. Sometimes people can't help. You know, times are tough. Mm -hmm. And how many times can you help? Because I I get get 15, 20, 30 Mm GoFundMe. So imagine if I have to help all those people, I won't be able to pay my mortgage. Right, right. I mean, you have to be responsible for nobody's safe for the moment that you get sick. You tell me. 
You probably say for going on vacation, for getting your first apartment, your house, for the university of your kid, et cetera, et cetera. But you never, a majority of us, we don't say for when we get sick. Right. So what happened is when that moment gets here, then God, please help me and let's go for me. Yeah. That's the only option. And yeah. we shouldn't done that. We, yeah. sh we shouldn't do that. We should be prepared because we don't want uh, that moment to get here. And then our kids asking for money, our husband, our wife, our cousins, putting your family or your friends in that position because you were not diligent. You were not and responsible. I, I, told my, I told my following, listen, guys, this is... This is an easy solution. Yeah. Like this is the the, the reality is it, it's not rocket science. No, yeah, like you don't need and to be a super, billionaire. It doesn't have to be super expensive. Right, you don't need to be a billionaire. This is this is a real concern. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, every day more likely to happen. Mm -hmm. But you can fix it. You can be prepared for it with a hundred dollars a day. Yeah, like I'll spend that in in Netflix and Hulu subscriptions. Right, right. You know, so I mean, <laughs> it's, it, well, that's a hundred dollars a month. Uh, it's you'll be surprised how many subscriptions do I have. Twenty five right. dollars a week. Yeah, I'm right. telling you, it's, it's it, it, and it's it's trite. I know, like throughout the years, people have said for the price of a cup of coffee a day, blah blah blah. But it's true, it's guys. Reality. This yeah. isn't. And the thing is, you just have to make that decision once. I'm going to be a responsible parent, spouse you know, family member, breadwinner, and I'm going to put this protection in place so that if something happens to me, my family will be taken care of. I will be taken care of. I will be able to afford the treatment that I need and to take the time off work that I need. And you, you if you decide to just do that, you can do it like, like you're saying. And you'll for, sleep like a baby. Yeah, right? You'll the, sleep like a baby because you know, hey, hopefully nothing never happens, man. Mm -hmm. But when it does, you got it. And what it does is it, 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 it it's the foundation because... Yeah, puts the options on the table. The reason that people don't like to buy life insurance is because it's like, uh, I'm not going to make any money off of, you know, it, th that's just something that's pure protection. Uh, but the thing is, no matter what financial future that you are trying to build, that life insurance is the foundation because you could save a million dollars, right? And then it can and go do a great away job of saving. And then you get cancer. And guess what? There's this experimental treatment. It costs $500,000. You missed work. You were out for a year doing treatments. And guess what happened to your million dollars you saved? Listen, it's I, all gone. I did, um, I did a podcast with a doctor. Mm -hmm. And she said, it's something that really struck me. She, she said, listen, most people believe in the U.S. that they will live a long life and then they will die one day. That's not true. Mm -hmm. For most of us, we will leave, then we'll get sick, yep. and then we will be sick for a long time, and then we will die. Yep. That is very And true. I was like, whoa, wait, what? And he says, yes, statistically, mm -hmm. you will not just get sick and die. I mean, I know it's, it's going to sound crazy, but we wish it was that way. It's right. not. Well, yeah, well, I, I actually bring that up because back in the day, before medical advancements were better, you used to die a lot quicker right. when, when cancer hit or something. But now we've got great treatments. You're going to live longer, right? You're probably going to survive that. What does it take to survive? It, it, takes, yes. it money. takes money. And that's why we have a product mm -hmm. that we're very proud to share and we have to educate, educate people. We have the Living Benefits Incorporated to our term insurance, to our IULs, mm -hmm. whole insurance, we whole life insurance, we have the living benefits. Right. We have the goal. We have the protection. 30 days after your policy will get approved, the living benefits will kick in, mm -hmm. and you will be protected. And that is the peace the of, of mind incredible. that money cannot buy. Maybe, yes, money could buy it with little money. <laughs> Actually, that it's money included. could buy. Could buy. <laughs> but I'm saying the peace of mind, there is no price. It's, it's invaluable. It's priceless. It really is. I mean, it's priceless. every time that I see, again, like, like your friend, you know, uh, a cancer diagnosis or a heart attack or a stroke or a, a bad car accident. I mean, I drive on, you know, I-85 I to work every day in Atlanta and you could, something could happen that is completely not your fault. Someone comes and blindsides you, yes. you're in a coma, you know, you have se severe brain injuries. This can all happen. And when you have a family and I have two little boys, these things do, you, you think about these things and you think about what would my family do if, what would happen if, and having living benefits, and I'm very well covered with living benefits. I'm a huge believer. I practice what I preach. And I know for a fact that God forbid, if something like that happens, whether it's a surprise diagnosis or somebody blindsides me on 85 uh, tomorrow morning, I know for a fact that I'm going to have every treatment option on the table. My family is not going to have any financial problems. And I'm going to have the very best chance 
to get through that and get back to a normal life unscathed financially because I took the steps to put something in place beforehand. And that's that's the trick of it, right? You have to convince people, be proactive. You have to do it while you're healthy. You can't wait till something happens and then put the protection in That's place. right. And the reason why I also like the IUL is because some people want to save. They don't care about the life insurance. Right. They never care about the life insurance. But they find a product that they're like, okay, I'm going to save. So the way of, of explaining to this to my people, you have a product that you could put a little savings a month mm -hmm. and it's going to get divided. That money is going to get divided. A part of it is going to grow. It's going to accumulate for the future. The cash value. And the other part is going to pay for the life insurance. And when you do this connection and mm -hmm. you tell people, you could do one savings and you'll have life insurance, permanent life insurance. It won't expire in 10, 15, 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. Permanent life insurance. You have the living benefits 30 days after you have been approved. And you will have cash accumulation. A lot of people, that's the reason why a lot of people love the IUL. That can be accessed tax-free. I tax can't free. hear the people that think that, oh, I can't compare this with, with an IRA. If some clients come to me and say, I want to do an IUL because I just want to invest the money. I say, you're in the wrong product. Mm -hmm. And I tell them right away. I don't lie to them. I, I'm not going to tell you, okay, if you compare this with another product, you're going to make more more money. No, because here you have many other products. Mm -hmm. This is not an investment. If you look and compare an IUL with other strategies for the saving, of course, you're probably going to make a little less because we are not having this money just growing. Mm -hmm. You are getting money since the first day in an IUL. You're winning since first day. You're having... 200,000, 300,000 without just just making one little payment to your IOL. You have a big amount that is going to be put in place to your name with your family yep. uh, insured since the first day. So that's why we're winning from the get-go. 30 days later, you're getting that money put in place in case that you get sick, that you can't work because you go through a chronic critical, and terminal illness. Mm -hmm. And then you have the accumulation that you will be able to take out free of taxes. A lot of people compare the IUL with other, and yes, they probably gonna make a little bit more in the percentage, but what happens at the moment that you need to retire that money? A big piece in a 401k, mm -hmm. it's not bad. I love people to I save. Have a 401k. So love a 401k. yeah, nothing wrong with it. 401k is good, IRAs are good, and not like That's other agents. You don't have to choose. And, right. And <laughs> yeah, you can do it. It's good to be diversified. Yes. Right? You can't have all your eggs in one basket. Right. Mo you got. You can be having different strategies of saving. I tell people, don't come to me telling me that this is wrong and this is wrong. You have a 401k, that's beautiful. You have an IRA, it's beautiful. But you have to understand most of these products, when you take the money out, it's taxed. you will have to pay taxes. Your savings are not a replacement for your life insurance. And mm -hmm. your investments are not a replacement for your for your life insurance. Absolutely that's just not. The, that's just a fact. Absolutely. And I, I tell people all the time, like that's a misconception that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, I had someone reach out to me and he said, listen, I'm, I'm diagnosed with cancer. A lot of people reach out to me through social media. Mm -hmm. I need a life insurance. I'm like, man, you're, you're late. Like right. You're really late mm -hmm. now. Yeah. And he's like, well, and I'm like, why didn't you have life insurance? And I said, well, I have money saved. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, what is your money? And he's like, well, funny enough, I actually purchased a business two months before this happened. Mm. So I used the money to do that. Oh and now, now it turns out that I'm about to lose that business because I can't work and I don't have the money. I'm like, man, I'm really sorry to hear that. Like, yeah. that is a really awful situation. That is. And a, a prime example of what you were just mentioning, you could have all this thing and lose it just because you didn't, you right. didn't want to buy this. Why thing. would you want to to pay for your own cancer treatment and replace your own income and use, use your savings because this disaster hit when you could just for pennies on the dollar insure against that disaster right. hitting and keep your savings for what it's supposed to be for, which is for your retirement, for right. enjoying your life, not for paying a hospital. Just one decision, just one decision could have 
just change the whole scenario. Yep. It's just all about, one. It's all about risk transference. Yes. Take that risk off of you and transfer, transfer it to it an to insurance company. company for pennies on the dollar. And a lot of people, it's just smart. a lot of people, when I talk about term insurance or IUL, they say, I want to do the IUL because I want to have everything in a combo. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I like it. But I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it. Let me tell you, when I started my IUL, I was like, would I be able to save $50 a week? Of course, I was mm -hmm. able to. What happened is, we are not You'd be surprised prepared. how much money you spend without <laughs> thinking, <laughs> right? I, the it's question true. that I ask people, what do you spend $50 a week? Mm -hmm. What do you spend $40 a week? Trust me. Trust me, I'll put you to a test. I'm going to take you to Walmart. I'm going to take you to the mall. <laughs> mm -hmm. And guess what? We, most of us, live in, we live here. This is a country that you get sent to by a lot of material things. And you are spending 100, 150, 200 weekly. In the in economy things, that we're living, you in just- In things that you really don't need. You spend $50 just stepping out. But, you, but you think very hard it's when you insane. have to save for you. Yeah. It's a you priority thing. You think very hard when you have to put some money away for your future. Mm -hmm. But you don't think when you take your wallet out and say, how much it is? I was very, f I, I did a test. I went to Target to buy conditioner and shampoo in less than 15 minutes i had a car with a hundred like 400 <laughs> 400 and something dollars that doesn't the suffice. target god got you i was like and when i got home and i'm like what do i need this for oh my god what did i got and then for? you forgot the shampoo. Right? and then i was thinking and yeah. debating with myself <laughs> you forgot the shampoo i was i didn't even think of the shampoo i started with. <laughs> and i was thinking would i be able to save 50 dollars for an iul really yeah. and i went 15 minutes, I looked at my watchings. How did I fill out these cards so fast? Mm -hmm. I have that ab ability. That's why but I then I take so long yeah. to decide if I could save $50 for my future. That is something that I hope but that, that happens. if you're considering, think of what I'm telling you. We spend a lot of money in unnecessary things. But that happened to me, and I made two decisions. Number one, I could buy more life insurance. Number two, I shouldn't go to Target that much. Yeah. <laughs> I really shouldn't. <laughs> you really should. You should avoid Target at all at, at all uh, all costs. So, Rolando, I mean, it's 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 incredible. It's been such a great discussion. I just love that you two found each other because Thanks. it's not just that you have, obviously, similar backstories being, being Cuban immigrants coming to this country the exact same time, um, but that you both have the right attitude. And it's kind of a miracle, if you ask me, that you reached out to this guy uh, and that he responded and that you were, it, it says a lot to your credit, Rolando, that you, th th there's this temptation to think that you know everything. Right. Like, I've already done my research. I've already heard what you're gonna say, so I'm not gonna listen to you. But you have this responsibility to your followers right. to, to do the right thing and, and to be giving them the right advice and Drialis, you reaching out from a servant's heart of just wanting to, to, to let him know your your side of things and you reaching back out to her. I think it's an amazing thing that you guys are, are, are now working together. Uh, I'm and very, very you're gonna happy. You're going to help so many people. I'm together. very happy because I said to him, you could be my son. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, he could be my son. And I said, She, she did the math. She actually proved this out to me. Yes. <laughs> and you are too young to close the eyes, to close the doors of new products just because you don't understand them. That's why I want to tell you how good and how many people, because he has the God giving uh, everything that God had given him to mm -hmm. communicate and to educate people. Thank you. And I want him to understand so he could help more people. This no, is I'm, what we I'm, love. I'm really happy. I'm really glad to have Drialis on, on, on our team and, mm -hmm. and have him have her. Drialis on your team? Yes, you're in my team now because <laughs> she comes in and she helps my whole team. She actually shows up to the trainings. Oh, yeah. She has She's my amazing. She has my girls crazy fire up. Uh -huh. And she just comes in, gives us all the little tricks to 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 be able to to help the clients and mm -hmm. to reach out to more people just and my uh, my girls love her yeah. they just love her every time we do a, we do a training with her everyone is pumped yeah and so we love her and so far so good man we're we're hoping to get this a message to a lot more people in the community yeah you guys um, are you guys are a juggernaut together i mean you're a juggernaut you're a juggernaut you guys i want to do a pic together. i want to do a picture with him like in black <laughs> i believe uh, is, back to back yeah is right. i believe like, that in social media these days you have a lot of people that unfortunately 
are tied are prisons they're they're imprisoned by their own contents mm-hmm. right they're unwilling to say hey mira maybe this this might not be the best way to do it or maybe I'll take this back and or maybe I, I'll I'll, right. I'll take a step back and right. be, and, be and objective for a of second of course and let new information and I think in. it's liberating because mm-hmm. I, when I started making content that's one of the things that is more concerning right mm-hmm. I want to say everything I want to make no mistake because mm-hmm. then people will know yeah but the reality is we're humans and we make mistakes mm-hmm. and people will know and they should know mm-hmm. and if they have a problem with that it's their problem right you know and my job here is to tell you what I feel about life insurance and about finance and if anything I can post out there can help you improve your life mm-hmm. awesome and as long as you see it that way social media is an awesome place and it has the it has the ability to really impact a lot of people we we did um an event a live event in Florida last year we're doing one this year two in October mm-hmm. and 300 people showed we're up we're both going to be uh, there 300 people showed up and this year we're, we're counting on like probably 500 people Wow. And it's going to be awesome. And that's just, it's proof of, you know, there is a lot of Hispanics out there that come to the U.S. that really want to put their families out there, put yeah. their finances in shape, and really, you know, conquer the American dream. You guys have. And we have to be part of that movement. You have such a huge opportunity in front of you, and you guys uh, working together as a team, you are really going to make an impact uh, on your on your community. And, uh, and hopefully... The impact that you can make on the Hispanic community in educating them about these things. I mean, just to imagine for a second what that could do in echoing through generations. If you guys get, you know, hundreds, thousands of families to protect themselves, what that's going to do, um, you know, it, it, throughout the next two or three generations is it, it, going to be I pretty think it'll, I'll, I'll think it'll have a huge impact. And, and, and again, I, I like to thank Alliance because you guys have really created an awesome platform of support for us to be able what we, uh, to do what we do. So oh, thank you very thank much. Thank you, guys. Thank That's you. That's what I told you. You come to Alliance, and you will be happy. <laughs> You're in the family. You're in the family. Well, listen, Rolando, uh, w- welcome to Alliance. Thank you. thank you so much for coming and thank you being a guest. Me. Drew Alice, you are the best. We absolutely love you. Uh, we're really looking forward to capturing some awesome content uh, from both of you guys uh, today that is going to help us do what we want to do, which is to spread the word about things like living benefits and IUL throughout the Hispanic community and beyond. So uh, thank you guys so much for joining us for this uh, edition of the Alliance podcast. Thank you for having us. <laughs> we love to come to Atlanta. And I know that um, it's my first time. Rolando's Atlanta, so. first time. I'm loving it. But yeah. it won't be the first. It won't be the won't last. Be the last oh, no. Oh, thank no, you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having us. Thank, thank you, you Sam. Listen to this interview and more on the Alliance Group podcast.